What is happening guys? Welcome back to Red Beer's Garage and you guys ask. So today we're going to be installing a mud motor on a boat. I never had a boat uh, to install one on and your boy Braxton uh, got him a swamp rat. This is a, a beauty of a boat and he's been fixing it up over the last couple weeks. So we contacted Mud Skipper. Like I said, you guys have been asking for this for years. So we went with the seven and a half horse surface drive kit. So it has an electric start, seven and a half horse engine. It is a Hemi engine, which is pretty cool to know. It's a different style of Hemi than I've seen. The valve cover is a little bit different. And just to let you guys know, we will be fully building this engine on an upcoming video. And unfortunately, when we do that, we're gonna have to remove the electric start. Uh, but it's Braxton's boat, not mine, so it ain't my problem. So uh, this kit is super nice, has all stainless steel hardware. It's made out of some aluminum and some steel, as far as I know and uh, should be pretty quick little install his transom is a little bit rotten just like alan jackson's was in the song drive so we have to pop that puppy off slap us a new treated board on there i'm just assuming we can slap a two by eight treated board then put a steel plate on it who knows i ain't no captain of no boat so uh let's get this thing installed because it's gonna be pretty fun then we're gonna take that puppy out on the lake and see how seven and a half horsepower tows this hog so let's get to it so we gotta replace this transom. You can see it's bad. This thing is cork status. So what, and again, I'm no boat professional. So I think this aluminum plate is here to not wear out your wood, putting on and off the boat. And then it has a piece of plywood on the rear. And I'm assuming that same thing. So what we're gonna do is put a two by, a treated two by eight in here, and then put us a quarter inch plate of aluminum here and on the back that sandwich bolted on and that'll be a replaceable like wear part so we don't wear out the wood on the transom now i'm hoping oh no hey oh <laughs> braxton's back with a swamp rat how much money are you in this puppy so far uh traded a chainsaw and four hundred dollars so i got about like six hundred in it and you built the front deck that wasn't in there the trolling motor wasn't on it was just a bare boat We'll say like 800 bucks. Counting the tires and everything? Yeah. Okay. Had a few blowouts. So this kit is $1,100, correct? Yes. About 1,200 shipped probably. Uh, so this will be about a $2,000 boat when we get done. And we're gonna start racing it on the weekends. <laughs> See if we can get a little bit of that prize money to ease the price. I'm gonna try this oscillating tool to cut these rivets. We'll see what it does. I'm gonna do a few, then I'm gonna let Braxton do a few. May not look like it to the naked eye, but that mug's cut. I love my that one. Oh, that one's cut too. Braxton, I swear for gosh. I swear for gosh. I swear for gosh. 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 All right, we need a hammer and a chisel, aka oak screwdriver. So this is the only problem. These need cut too. And they hold on these. It's not a problem. We're gonna put new bolts in it, but make sure. Uh, go ahead. Don't cut. Like just cut those heads off the back back there. Now some vice grips probably to grab on it and pull it out. I got it. Oh, you got an epic bow inches. Just keep baby pliers in your pocket. I'm gonna tell you right now, those are gonna be awful for what you're trying to do. Those are for like you're putting a dollhouse together. Or <laughs> Maybe the kid just got home from Walmart with a dollhouse. So we're gonna pull all these bolts out. We're gonna bore you, and then uh, pop this board out. Then we'll start fitting the new board, cutting it, getting it bolted in, getting some aluminum on there. And it also probably is a good idea. Again, I'm no boat guy, but I would think if you also want to extend the life of your wood to coat it in some type of resin, like fiberglass resin, that would seal it even more so water couldn't penetrate it. I would imagine, if you have the time. Braxton came with a non-treated board. I made him even go buy a treated board. He's trying to save money. No, I just found it. And? Try to save money. No, it's just for Don't you lie. He's a college kid now. He's got to save money. Oh yeah. Oh, 
That's pretty solid down there. What follows is a brief construction montage. I'll be uh, talking in no time, boy. Building wood and go karts in no time. <laughs> We're gonna have to notch the board for these. That's tight. It's real tight. I'm gonna take a little edge off of it. Harbor freight. Thank you. Harbor freight. Leave that on a little head. How's this gonna work? Yeah, I would just take an angle grinder or something and go right across there. Well, what are you gonna do? Just look at it on that open tank grinder. My dad always taught me if you want someone to feel like you love them, talk to them like trash and never spend time with them. <laughs> <laughs> Fits too good. Oh yeah, and and whoop, we gotta get these four. This one, this one, this one, this one. They're cut. And they're flush. But Lord, I don't know. Way this swirl's going, I don't know. Oh, that was easy. The one was. Oh, this ain't junk. It's junk. That's all I'm saying about it. We had it for a year. And the friends of got riding. The peace of my childhood. It'll never be forgotten. It will. Just no treated to the boat. A little bit of aluminum. Turf on the flow. <laughs> <laughs> Two boys put the mud skipper house on this boat. And we're going to throw a rooster tail on the moss. <laughs> what we done here? Oh, I can drill it. Mm. Mud Skipper wants to see a quality boat installed, not some halfway jerry rig, non treated junk. Slapping boats in there. I'm using fender washers and non. Like, we need to do stainless on this whole thing, but you know, brass is freaking cheap. What? Can we get these bolts installed or what? I don't even care anymore. I'm just a loose cannon right now. I know. I thought you were putting silicone on there. You said 716? I was supposed to, wouldn't I? So, whoa, whoa, whoa. Take it off, start over. No, I'll do, yeah, you can use it. I don't care. I don't even care anymore. I've lost my will to even care. Yeah, there we go. Faster, 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 faster. Squeeze faster. Now just zigzag oh, everywhere. Oh gosh, you just got she it right. Just it in there. Okay, we're using all of it. Go to the trash. I know, but that's fine. Now go zigzag, boy. But you said this was too thin. Let's go across center. Oh yeah, just putting it. Oh yeah, we got one more row. Yeah. I gotta redo it. It's like dollar sign. No money spared on this build. Oh gosh. It's yeah, gonna get all over you. All right, so Braxton got him a seat, so we're taking a quick sponsored break from Daddy's credit card. <laughs> <laughs> Daddy's credit card. Uh, he, so he's going to trace around this, or cut, so the whole saw won't grab his carpet. But we're gonna install a swivel seat here. Let's hold it down. Put in carpenter. I can't wait to read the hate comments on this video. <laughs> now 
Now you're in the film. How much is there in there? Yeah, well, the stick is dope. Where's your bolt at? Uh, just screws, whatever we use. Where are they at? I don't have any. Those are big. <laughs> what? <laughs> they didn't come with them. You damn. My dad's still gonna have a Oh, let's just go Jack Drag Tour. Let's see what Greg has for me to just suckle from his teeth. Please. Underwater, though, this thing looks like a freaking fish. Like, is it? Does it smell <laughs> like magic That's why. fish? What if they intended on that? I figured it would look like like a giraffe or something. The fish would be like, this ain't don't belong here. I'm waiting. So what we have to do before doing the bolt actually is we gotta put an aluminum cap on this. We might take some diamond plate and bend it in a break and then cap it off and then TIG weld the back seam. You know what I mean? So it's a yeet. And then we'll make a sleeve that's that deep or so on both both sides. Make it even, Stevens. So we gotta do that and then we can put the kit together. We're gonna show you step by step how to do the kit. Hmm. If I had the swag off road, the soldier boy off road. <laughs> so uh, uh, finger Swag. brakes, I could break this, but I can't do a compound break that close to each other. I would like to break this edge over so it makes a cap over that rear and that would keep from moisture seeping in. I mean, we still come the Dale out of it, but still don't want moisture to get behind the piece of wood on the back of the boat. The Mac Daddies. So I crudely bent that edge, but turned out really good. Did it with some vice grips. Now we capped off this back section and we got a good spot for the motor clamps to push onto it so it won't wear out as wood. So now we're going to get this screwed on here. So I wanted to real quickly say that I know you're not supposed to put aluminum on treated wood, but we're going to do a rubber isolator in between it when we take the engine off to build it. And we're also going to powder coat the aluminum black. So that's double protection and it shouldn't corrode the aluminum. I know a lot of people was concerned about that when we posted pictures, but this was just like mock-up, just like we build chassis and stuff. We've got to build it all raw and then take it apart and he's going to stain the wood and everything once the uh the bulk of the treatment dries out of the wood so back to the video using all stainless screws that's real nice clean. dang cuz we will link these counter sinks in the video description yeah just go through the aluminum so first we remove the stationary bolt on the mount that goes on the transom. Pull the nuts and washers from the engine mount and remove the pivot pin. Slide the engine mount on the transom and install the nuts and washers back on the pin on each side. Remove the belt cover and slide the belt in from the top. The kit comes with RTV, so I placed a small amount on top and bottom of the gasket and installed the prop shaft. Remove the factory installed key on the crankshaft of the engine and place on the spacer, then the new key and the pulley that comes with the kit. You don't have to tighten the bolt just yet. We can now bolt up the surface drive to the engine. Make sure to use the aluminum spacer that comes with the kit in between the engine and the surface drive. Next, we can install the engine on the bolt and along with the prop brace. So now that we have the kit all pretty much installed, we tightened all these up and the bulkhead up here. Now what we're gonna do is we've got the belt tension, basically how you tension the belt. There's a tensioner on the back, back here. We just push down on this and then tighten these two half inch bolts in here. Uh, half inch wrench, they're actually 5 16 bolts. 
So now we're putting red Loctite on the crankshaft bolt so that'll never work its way loose. And um, not like a crazy amount. Let's do it down here. More than that. And then we can zap that on with an impact to make sure your belt is aligned. Ours perfectly aligned. So first we put this on without this block back here. Uh, you know, we wouldn't, we, yeah, was we reading the instructions? Mm, but yeah, we wouldn't read them like you should. But uh, so now we can tighten this up, put the cover on the belt. He did give us an extra belt so Braxton can keep that in his battery well, just so he has it out on the lake. Yep. There we go, that mug's tight. And you can cross thread it for even more tightness. <laughs> And I'm gonna also go ahead and tighten up the engine. So I always run this Lucas High Zinc because it has a lot of zinc in it and it's really good for breaking into your engines. This stuff is not that expensive. It's like $10 for this bottle, but it does a ton of oil, especially in these go-karts. So I just give it a, a good squirt in there. And then he went to the dollar store to get oil. <laughs> you told me to. <laughs> and, uh, so we got 1030 high mileage synthetic blend, but this is a break-in oil. This oil should be changed after like, I would change it less than eight hours because you're gonna have another half quart. And that's the best thing. He can keep this half quart in there when he's at the lake, want to change the oil. <laughs> <Take the bottle. laughs> oh, that's Tennessee, baby. You're that like, probably wait. violates something. Yeah, don't do that. Yeah, we, for legal reasons, we'll delete that. And then we gotta put, the last thing we have to do is put the handle on hook up the throttle and the kill switch and just go over everything. Make sure you tighten every bolt. We don't want to be stuck on a lake. We want to be the freaking skipper on an island out there. I got a troll in my head. You would be Gilligan. I would be skipper of the fat guy. One thing I highly recommend is in our video's description is Amazon links. Buy everything. No, uh, <laughs> there is a magnetic oil drain. I would highly recommend running it in here because it's going to capture a ton of stuff Old all the time. Plug oil drain plug. Uh, they're only like 10 bucks. You need to order one. Pronto Escobaranto. And uh, I think that's a word. I'm not excited about pulling this engine to build it. Cause I- <laughs> Yeah, that's a pain. That was yeah. a pain. Uh, I wonder if we could pull it. I don't know. I'm not looking forward to it. Extra security. So one thing, if you want a little bit more power out of your engine from stock, there's a Phillips head screw right here. Hope you can see that with a spring on it. Take that mother out, baby. So what that's gonna do is let you very slightly get rid of it, drop it on the <laughs> ground, you don't need it. So what that is gonna do is if you had a kid's go-kart or something, you wanted to governor down the kids even more than the governor, you can draw that screw in and that's gonna give you less throttle pull. So now we have a little bit more pressure over the governor uh, than we had before. So we'll be able to rev it a little higher, like talking about 500 RPMs or so. Uh, it's also a good idea to take this foam out. This is a boat, so you're not ever gonna be around dust, you're on water. Um, so this is all right, but uh, douse it in oil, just motor oil, soak it up and then wring it out really good. Put it back in there and bippity boppity boop. Who is your uncle? Bob. And I was loosening this tin on this uh, throttle arm because from stock from factory they're like super tight they're made to set set it and forget it set it like 3600 rpm and run a log split or something last thing we got oil in it that's important yeah. we don't have a battery hooked up yet to do the electric start but last thing is to put the kill switch and he does give you like a jet ski style os i fell out of the boat
So last thing we have to do is hook up the kill switch, which is tying into this uh, jamboozle bit of wire. We'll show you that in a minute. We just tightened the transom bolts up and we have to drill a 5 16 hole through the transom and put the last remaining bolt in. And it's like a forever bolt. So make sure you're getting it straight, baby daddy. We ran the throttle cable in between the starter and the key switch box, which we're gonna remove this later. We'll do a video on how to set up the ultimate bolt, boat, broat, schmote, uh, with like a full wiring setup. It's gonna be pretty sweet. But for now, we're gonna leave the key switch box on here. To hook up the kill switch, you have this yellow line coming out of the block. This is the low oil sensor. This is made for pressure washers and generators and stuff, so if you knock the engine over, oil will go away from this a little ball bearing will roll and it'll kill the engine we don't need that on a boat because braxton's going to get out there trying to race somebody and his boat's going to shut off when you you know taking 5g turns so the part of the yellow wire that's going into this little box up here is going to plug in to the kill switch line the red wire so we got that plugged up now this little ring terminal you can take out this lower bolt which is an eight mil and sandwich it in between the side cover and this piece of metal here and then put the bolt back in and that's your ground. And then this wire coming out of the block is perfectly fine to just let dangle. All right, so Braxton vacuumed out the boat. Um, I'm pretty sure we got everything tight. We tightened the prop, we need to oil this yeah yeah that last yeah. thing but this is a cog belt setup that's what i like about it it's not a chain you're not going to have to worry about the noise of a chain it's going to be a lot quieter uh braxton does have an extra belt braxton isn't on this thing like multiple times a week the belt's going to last him a really long time especially if he keeps his spare belt out of the sun and put up in the boat somewhere so you're supposed to use this filter we filter it later we after filter it when it sloshes around yeah Make sure it held that all the way on there. Yeah, that's nasty. Oh my gosh, Braxton's a big baby. I'm just baby. kidding. I thought she was a farmer. Oh, we're full. Oh. <laughs> oh. So we had an air pocket in it. So I'm glad we did that. That's a lot. Of, oh, there we go. Okay, we are full of grease. Pop that off and grab you a paper trail. I'm glad we pulled that screw up. to blow a girder bearing. I'll clean it off the old hammock paper trail. Okay, grab that and sit up there. Prop clear! No, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I started just eating up his ribs. Baseball career over. So we're gonna need this. Oh, it's already in the on position. Uh, this is just a pressure kill like a dirt bike would have. And then if you was to pull this, it automatically grounds it. So turn our fuel on, turn our choke on. turn it off because that float will bounce and it'll flood your engine out so if i was you right before you get out of the water uh, i would just shut the fuel off and let it run it all out and kill itself uh, okay so we're ready i'm gonna go get me a fresh new two-piece and we're gonna <laughs> hit the water baby
Uh, we'll meet you at the lake, players. Woo -woo. Several days later. Ready to hit the water? This is a fishing boat. Body dog. Boating mistake number one. He didn't bring the keys. Nice day for boating though. This guy's wanting to race us on a jet ski. He don't know we just put the seven and a half on it. You ain't trying to race, are you? <laughs> That's low enough? No. <laughs> We need to idle her down just a buzz, if it will. How's it feel right off the right off the gate? Is it a lot to turn? A lot to turn? I mean, it pushes it extremely easy, like better than I thought it would. We got our camera crew right there. So guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video of the old Swamp Rat with the seven and a half horse surface drive mud skipper setup. Uh, I think this kit was really well made. We had read some comments where people was griping about it saying we should have spent $3,000 and all this. We wanted the most budget kit and this mud skipper hit the budget perfect at $1,200 uh, roundabouts with that seven and a half horse electric start. Now we could have went with the non-electric star engine because we're going to be removing all that off of it uh, in the future because we're going to do a full all-out build. Uh, so we could have saved a little money by not getting an electric start, but I think the kit was great. We had no problems. The only one issue we ran into, which it wasn't an issue for us, is it came with the wrong bolt for the crankshaft thread. Uh, they're 5 16 fine thread, and it came with a 3 8 fine thread. So I'm just assuming that uh, a bolt got mixed up in the kit. But kit was great quality went together super smooth everything's real simple we're going to take it out on the next video and we're going to run do some benchmark numbers i'm not going to be in the boat because it's obviously going to be faster without me in it but uh we're going to do some benchmarks then we're going to start doing the upgrades we're going to do them in series of like a budget style build and then we'll do the all-out build on the engine with billet rod flywheel cam all that stuff so let us know what you think of the swamp rat braxton's new boat and uh thank you guys so much for watching make sure to check out the links in the video description for everything we use on this boat motor kit and we appreciate you supporting us we love you guys and god bless
We'll definitely need to do a little different trim now. I don't know what, but we on open water though. So go stay closer to shore since we're such a small boat. You know what I mean? Yeah. So fast as we're getting right now is eight. Uh, people claim what, like 17, 18? Uh, we're definitely gonna figure out our trim to get that, I think. We're gonna stay near the bank. This is a tiny boat. Well, you're just trying to raise it up higher? Yeah, maybe that's something we can find out what, you know, other people are doing, you know, just to try it out. Oh, now, baby. 